This year, one of the focuses for Black History Month is health, as this year's theme is Black Health and Wellness. Well, this morning, we're discussing Black health and wellness and looking back at the challenges many face. Well, joining us this morning is Dr. Falakami Odedna, a renowned cancer researcher at the Mayo Clinic Center for Health Equi Equity and Community Engagement Research. Well, good morning, Dr. Odedna. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning and thank you for inviting me to the morning show. Uh, I'm wishing everybody a happy Saturday and happy Black History Month. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. So I want to jump right in. What are some of the struggles that African-American communities traditionally face when it comes to health and wellness? Um, that is a great question. So first of all, just to put into context uh, what we're going to be discussing this morning, I want to share two headlines that were forwarded to me uh, by a couple of my colleagues. So the first one is uh, from blackhealthmatters.com that says that African-American male life expectancy declines due to COVID-19. Uh, the second one is from USA Today that says black women are missing from breast cancer two more data and that may be killing them. So our population really faces significant health disparities and there are historical patterns to this. As you know, the historical pattern comes from the era of the slavery where there was no medical treatments that they were being used to practice medicine and experimented on uh, without consent. And that historical context continues to contribute to the mistrust and the distrust that we have. And that has led to what we now know as significant health disparities within our communities. So for example, uh, diseases tend to start very early in Blacks, uh, younger African-Americans, are living or dying from conditions that typically you find in white Americans at older ages. Uh, blacks are more likely to die at all ages from all causes. Um, and there are social factors um, as well as health system factors, as well as provider level factors that contribute to the significant uh, uh, disparities uh, that we face and, and places us with unique um, uh, disproportionate burden of heart disease, cancer, stroke, uh, and, and other things. You mentioned distress as one of the uh, disparities. Is there any uh, tips on how uh, people can start to feel more comfortable and start trusting into our, our healthcare providers because we know that you know they're essential? Yeah, absolutely. So first of all, you know, I want to kind of step back uh, and talk about the fact that, you know, the, the, the significant, significant, significant things that really affect our health has to do with healthcare system factors, provider level factors, and individual level factors. So let me talk about the provider level factors, because you're right. Uh, it's very important that we don't have any choice. We have to seek providers. Some of the barriers and some of the things that we see with providers has to do with bias, prejudice, and discrimination to be able to get the care that we want to get. But this is one of the reasons why sometimes we say representation matters, right? Representation matters for us to be able to have culturally appropriate care and representation matters uh, for us to be able to make sure that our health is tailored to us. But I also want to take this opportunity to say that, you know, the heart of people really is what we need to get at. So even when we are faced with providers that are not uh, um, of the same race or of the same ethnicity, the care that they can provide is really very crucial. So we have to come in with open mind and make sure that we ask the right questions and make sure that we feel very comfortable. Uh, I want to just kind of, you know, step back and say sometimes, you know, finding the right provider for you is like dating, right? So sometimes you, you, you hit, you know, and it's a miss. But it's very, it's okay to seek a second opinion. It's okay to find somebody that you feel very comfortable with and you know that it's going to take good care of your health. Thank you so much, Dr. Dana. That was so insightful and that provided a lot of information for, I'm sure, a lot of people who can relate to a lot of the things that you're saying. So thank you again for joining us this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you.